signs of spring are all around us, and Easter reminds us of that great season. Well, joining us today is Dr. John Doe, who's been on Oklahoma Gardening before, and welcome, John. Thank you. And Dr. Doe is going to visit with us today about one of the favorite plants of Easter, and of course, that's the Easter lily. And we're here in the research greenhouses and surrounded by all the Easter lilies. Tell us what research you're doing here. We're working with trying to help the grower time the Easter lily. The date of Easter changes every year, as I'm sure everybody knows, and that can be difficult. So we're working on research towards that goal. Okay. Well, one of the first things, I guess, that we should discuss for the homeowner or the consumer is when they go to the store, what do they look for in buying the perfect Easter lily? Perfect Easter lily. Well, I'm afraid there's no perfect Easter lily, <laughs> but uh, it depends on what you want out of the Easter lily. Um, if you want it to last a long time, then you would want to pick it with uh, where the, maybe one flower is open or where the bud is very big but not open. If you want a big display where you can really enjoy the fragrance right away, then you would want to get one with several flowers open. But the problem is when you have a lot of flowers open, it won't last as long. Okay, and this is an example then of a, several buds. But are they going to open up at the same time or their variation? I mean, is there something they should look for there as well? Yes. Um, they should try to pick a plant with as many buds as possible. The more buds, the longer it will stay open. Also look for good, uh, clean foliage, um, healthy, dark green color. Each of lilies will vary in height, so pick the height that you want, you know, if you want it for a coffee table or whatever. What about are there any new varieties or new colors? Are we pretty much still sticking with the white? Or? There's still, uh, as far as Easter lily goes, there are still the same cultivars we've been growing for years, but there are other colored lilies out there. Um, they're not Easter lilies, but they do have a lot okay. of other colors, so look for those in the stores. Okay. And as far as Easter lilies, a lot of times we, we get them through several weeks and then it gets warm outside and we get a lot of questions where people want to know, can we plant them outside? What, what's your response to that? Sure can. Uh, in fact, they make nice outdoor plants for the most part. Uh, after it's done flowering, keep it in a well-lighted window, keep it watered, um, keep it watered as long as you can. The top will die back naturally after a while and you want to keep the top green as long as possible. What time of year would be best and first to plant it outside at that stage? Are we looking at the middle of April or after the frost-free date? After the frost-free date. They can tolerate some frost as well, so that won't hurt them too badly. So any time after it starts getting warm. Okay, and do they need full sun? Do they need protection? Which location should we put them at when we go outside? They need some sun. Full shade, definitely not. Uh, east or west exposure. East or west exposure, okay. Once we get them planted and the tops time back, do we need to cut them back some, or what recommendations do you have there? Uh, cut the back, the top back to make it look nice, but that's the main reason, just okay. you don't want those dead leaves hanging. Up. And then we want to start fertilizing them once we get them outside, or? Yeah, handle them as you would a normal bulbous plant, like a tulip or an Easter, or another lily. Okay. And they'll send up shoots the next early, early spring. Okay. So you mentioned, too, that sometimes when they plant them outside, we might get another bloom in the fall. Why don't you tell us about that? We're not sure what's going on there, but occasionally the bulb will send up another flowering spike late, late summer. Those are the ones that were grown in the greenhouse at the beginning of the year. Okay. If it happens, great, but don't expect it. And then as we go into the fall and winter, just let Mother Nature kill them back. Should we leave them, though, and, and let the stem and the foliage protect the crown and not cut it back until the spring? We do that a lot of our other perennials. It helps insulate them. Is that a good point here? Uh, I don't think it really will matter that much. Okay. It will be dead, and it probably will have removed it at some time anyway. Okay. Earlier. If it should get extremely cold, should we cover the, the top of the ground with mulch or anything to help insulate the root system? Uh, a little bit would help, but you're probably doing that anyway for your other bulbs. Okay. So. And then in the spring, what, this time of year, we can expect some new flowers in, right? That's right, some more sheets coming. Okay. Well, John, I think this has been some helpful information. Again, the consumers are going to be seeing these in the grocery stores and floor shops just any time. And, of course, yours are, we're still a few weeks as far as taping from Easter, That's but right. when it airs, it'll be very timely. So thanks again, and we want to wish all of our viewers a happy Easter as well. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel.
You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.